Welcome back to my tutorial series on modeling a clock in Maya. So far we've modeled the clock itself and now we will be completing the model of the hands. So let's get started by going to create polygonal primitives pipe. We will bring it forwards as we did the hands. We want to center it with roughly the hour hand. Scale it down. And now I want to show you what we will be modeling. We will be modeling these plastic rings which enable the clock hands to move at different speeds from each other. They sit inside each other. So, kind of like an antenna on a radio that's collapsible. We will be modeling that by putting the cylinders inside of each other. And to make this a little easier to walk on, I'm going to turn on wireframe on shaded. And I'll go back to scaling. We want to scale it so it just fits inside the hour hand. Like so. And then we will scale it along the z-axis a bit. And now we will duplicate it. I'm just hitting Control D. Of course, of course you could go to Edit, Duplicate. And now I will scale this one down so it sits inside of the one we duplicated it from. Now then we will bring it forwards. So it sits about half about a quarter of the way to the second hand. Now the minute hand the minute hand's hole is too large to be attached to this I guess it would be called an axle. So what I'm going to do is go to vortex mode, select all of the vortexes that would be wrapped around the axle, then scale it. Of course scaling and making sure I constrain constrain the z-axis scaling by control clicking on the z-axis while scaling and bring it so it fits on the axle. There we go. Now the last piece of geometry we're going to create for this mech mechanism is a pipe. I mean excuse me, a cylinder. So I just went to create polygon or primitive cylinder, but I'm going to change the options. So we create it along the Z axis, and I'll set the axis divisions to 30. Then I'll click create. Move it forward. Scale it down. And we want this one to fit inside the last axle we created. and we will bring it up. Remember we want it to fit just inside it. Also we don't want it to protrude too far out from our second hand. There we go. So that's it for that geometry. As you can see it is sort of like an antenna on a collapsible antenna on a radio. And the next thing I'm going to do is bevel these edges just to make it look more machined. So to do that I'm going to go to edge mode. This is on the one that supports the hour hand. Then I will go to select select edge loop tool. We did this previously in this tutorial series. And double click on the border edge and it will select all the edges around that border. We'll do, th do the same for the border edge that wraps around the smaller axle in front of it. Now we'll go to Edit Mesh Bevel. These are the settings that you want. We'll leave the width at 0 0.5 and we want four segments. Then we'll click Bevel. There, now we've beveled that edge and we will repeat the process on the one for the minute hand. Go to edge mode, double click to select the edges going all the way around, 
This is called an edge loop. Then go to Edit Mesh Bevel. And there we go. I will now turn off wireframe unshaded. As you can see, the edges have a bit of a jaggediness to it. Now, you might not be able to see it because of the recording software, but it does have a jagged edge. So we're going to reevaluate the normals, which are creating the, that jagged edge, as I'm pretty sure we've already done for this tutorial before. Go to Normals, set Normals Angle, leave it at 30 degrees, click OK, and repeat for the excuse me, I clicked the wrong one, secondary axle. And that's it for cleaning them up. The next thing we're going to do is model this end cap. We will be creating another cylinder, grabbing the move tool, dragging it forwards, and we're going to scale it down so it's just larger than the radius of the, I guess, the middle point of our second hand. Show you a quick wireframe view of what I'm doing so far. Okay. And we want to have it set up so about half of it sits in front of the second hand, but it completely covers the second hand. So now the next thing I'm going to do is go to Select, Select Edge Loop. This will actually automatically move your object into edge mode. You don't have to do it previously like we did here. I will double click on one of the border edges and I will be creating another bevel. Now we're going to do something special with this bevel. So I'm selecting the object, Object Mode, opening up the Attributes Editor, excuse me, opening up the Attributes Editor, and I'm going to the Poly Bevel 8 tab. Now the thing I'm going to uncheck here is Auto Fit. Then I'm going to adjust the roundness. I'm going to set it to something along the lines of just about there I should do. I'm not percent sure. Let me look at the image again. There we go. So I've got negative 0.4 right now as my roundness value. See how it's inverting our bevel function? That's what we wanted. And the next thing I'm going to do is reduce the segments. We don't need quite that many. And I will also reduce the offset. We don't want it protruding onto our second hand. So once that's done, we will reevaluate the normals again on that object. And that concludes modeling our hands. The next thing I'm going to do is open up the layer slash channel box and display our glass. Now we can't see through the glass right now, so I'm going to fix that by selecting our glass and on the rendering shelf, create a blend. And then when the blend's attributes are attributes load up in the attributes editor, I will increase the transparency value. Remember white is completely transparent and black is solid. I'll set it to just short of white. That's 0 0.942. And there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is zoom inside the glass, select our hands and mechanism and move it back into the clock. There we go. Now this next thing I want to do is assign the black plastic material we assign to our body and assign it to these hands. So to do that I will select all the hands, not their axles, then I will open up the hypershade by going to window Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Give it a second to load. Now once the Hypershade is loaded, with the object still selected, right click on Blend 1, or whichever blend is the black blend, and go to Assign Material to Selection. We can close the Hypershade now. And there we go. 
Um, one last shader we want to assign, excuse me, two last shaders we want to assign to our model is the white plastic shader for these axles. So I've just selected them. I will create a blend. It's automatically assigned to the selected objects. Set the color to white. And next thing I want to do, select this cap, assign a blend to it by creating a new one, and set the color to something along the lines of gold. There you go. And that's it for modeling the hands. The next part will be finishing up and animating our clock.